Hello and welcome. Another edition of Thursday's Coach's Corner. Every single Thursday, we have the ability to speak with college coaches, all levels, all divisions. Uh, and Coach Dave Serrano and myself, we hope to simply be able to share information and a little insight into what lies ahead for, for not only student athletes, but their families as well. Today, we are really, I'm really excited to be joined by former player and head coach at uh, College of Charleston, as well as head coach, former head coach at Clemson University, and now the associate head coach and recruiting coordinator at the University of South Carolina in Columbia, South Carolina, Monty Leak. Monty, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Yeah, excited to be on with you. Well, I, you know, I know this is a busy time of year. We're in season, so I appreciate your time. Uh, and I really am excited because I, you know, having some familiarity as a parent with regard to the SEC, uh, I really would love to kind of dive in a little bit and, and be able to discuss with you your current season and, and talk about some of the changes uh, that have kind of elevated uh, the college baseball game today over the last couple of years. What are some of the, the changes that if, that you feel have kind of enhanced or gr grown the game to the level we're at today? Well, it's a great question. It's a very broad question, and I'll, I'll try to answer it uh, the best I can. I would say that just looking at the, the state of baseball in the SEC right now, what you're seeing is um, it's, a, it's an older – more physical league, um, you know, than it than maybe it was uh, just a handful of years ago, and I think there's a number of reasons for that. Um, I think you know the the COVID factor is is still there. And I think you'll start to see probably by next year some of that start to filter out, where you know players receive that that red shirt year back in 2020, which allowed you know guys to be. Um, you know, still play college baseball at an older age, along with they changed the draft. You know, the draft went, you know, down to 20 rounds. It's harder to get drafted now, you know, than it was uh, a handful of years ago. Uh, so there's, there's just simply more older, more physical players in the SEC now uh, than there were a handful of years ago. Um, you're seeing a lot of teams have several grad transfers, uh, you know, kids that played at other schools who uh, who who got a red shirt, had a year of eligibility left, were able to graduate and and move on and play another year to two years. So, I mean, and and we have that. I mean, we have a number of guys that are playing for us that are, you know, 22, 23 years old, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot there. There's a lot of guys in the league that are that are of that age, um, which makes the league again just more older and physical. Uh, you know, guys are bigger, faster, stronger, more mature. Uh, even the incoming freshmen are bigger, faster, stronger, and more mature just because of, you know, you know, kids specializing, kids, uh, you know, getting in the weight room, having more individual one-on-one -on -one attention um, and development uh, placed upon them at a younger age. So I think what you're seeing overall is just the quality of play in the league is very, very high uh, just because it's a very physical league. Um, I think that's probably the biggest thing that, that I've seen uh, change over the last few years. You know, Monty, you've been around the game at the college level for over 22 years. And what I would like for you to kind of share are your thoughts and opinions with regard to, as you alluded to, the draft. Mm -hmm. To me, it, it seems as if college baseball has become that developmental arm for Major League Baseball with regard to what used to be the rookie leagues and short season teams. It's also forcing or pushing more high school athletes into college than ever before. Can you just talk mm -hmm. about that dynamic from a developmental standpoint? Major League is almost utilizing specifically Division One baseball to, uh, to draft their student athletes. Well, I think one of the, the main benefits of going to school, especially if you're if you know, if a young man is fortunate enough to play, you know, at, at the SEC level uh, or at the power five level, think about what they're going to be exposed to when they come to a power five level institution in regards to nutrition, 
uh, you know, we can, we can, we can feed our athletes better than we ever have before. Um, as far as the strength training, you know, the strength training is at the highest level uh, that it's, that it's ever been. We have more information, more education, uh, more skilled strength coaches than, than we ever have before. We're playing the highest level of baseball that you can possibly play in the most pressure packed environments that you can possibly play in. So when you start talking about developing the player physically, developing the player mentally, um, it's very hard, I think, uh, going through uh, the minor league system where you're playing one level at a time. And there's a lot of benefit to that, too. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, not anti-professional baseball by, by any means. I play professional baseball and love the experience. <clears throat> but I think one of the things we have an advantage of is we're playing four games a week. We have days in the week where we can get our guys in the weight room, where they can recover, where they can develop physically. And then when we are playing on the weekends in the 10 series of SEC play that we're playing, we're playing in front of 8,000 plus people in pressure packed environments where winning is at a premium. And I feel like when a player goes through that year in and year out, by the time they get to their, their draft year, they're 20 pounds bigger than they were when they came into school. <clears throat> and they are prepared mentally uh, for the challenges of playing at the highest level. So the transition is a little bit smoother going into professional baseball for a kid who's been through a program like ours, um, you know, having gone through that experience. And I, and I just think they're, they're socially more um, adaptable, you know, having been on a college baseball team where you're, you're doing everything together. Uh, you know, they've, they, they're more mature mentally um, and socially. Uh, to go into professional baseball where, you know, again, you're going to be a professional, like you're going to get paid to play. You're going to be expected to show up on time. Nobody's, you know, nobody's, uh, you know, looking up on you, checking on you, those kind of things. Like you, you have to be mature enough to handle yourself as a young man by the time you go into professional baseball. I just think there's so many things that the college experience provides for uh, an athlete who uh, has the aspirations to play professional baseball and the transition is just a little bit easier than going straight out of high school. You know, one of the things that you're a tremendous recruiter, you've been doing this for a long time, and I would love for you to share, you know, not only your, your thoughts as far as what, what do high school student athletes really need to understand about that jump into a program such as an ACC or SEC level baseball program that, that they may not understand until the fall of that freshman year. Like I, I find a lot of high school students really don't understand what it's like walking on to, into Columbia, South Carolina, or going to the box uh, uh, or Mississippi state and going to Starkville. What, what are some of the things that you would like to kind of see high school athletes work on with regard to that mental preparation for college baseball? Wow. That, that, that's a great question. Um, what I find is that, the kids that come into college baseball that make that are you know that are coming from the high school ranks to the SEC ranks, um, it is a huge transition for them just because they are surrounded by players that can play at a very high level. You know they're used to being the best player on the field. Um, they typically one of the advantages kids I think have today is the level of player that we're getting. In the summer times, they typically surround themselves with really good players. Are usually playing on some of the better travel ball teams, so they they've been around good players and have played high level baseball. But I don't I don't necessarily think there's there's anything that's going to really prepare you for the jump from high school baseball to this level outside of try to be as fundamentally sound a baseball player as you can be. Um, I, I think I think kids that come from high school baseball programs that know. Uh, how to have an approach at the plate when it comes to situational hitting, that understand how to get a bunt down, that can bunt for a hit, that can play multiple positions, that are just pure baseball players that that have a skill set in all areas. They understand how to run the bases fundamentally well. They understand when to tag, when not to, you know, how to steal a base, how to go on a ball in the dirt. I think, I think when kids have higher baseball IQs, um, and and understand the game more so than they have been developed individually. Um, those are the kids that wind up being better players. Like guys, when they come in, you know, we're the first ones who have 
really tried to focus on anything from a swing mechanic development. Um, you know, they just always have hit. I was just a good hitter. My dad threw BP to me in the cage, and I just tried to hit line drives in the back of the cage. Like those guys that are just natural hitters that have natural ability, but are but have high baseball IQs that are more team oriented baseball fundamental type players. To me, those are the guys that wind up being really good college baseball players. I think the kids that focus so much on just their own individual development, which you need, but have had their own personal hitting coach, their own strength coach. Uh, everything's been just kind of really individualized for them. And it's been more about their individual development and getting recruited and not necessarily playing winning baseball. Uh, they don't know how to they don't know how to do all the little things that help you win a baseball game. And you have to develop those skills when they get to college. I think those are the kids that sometimes it's a little bit more of a challenge when the focus has been strictly on them. Um, so we like baseball players. I, I think that's that's probably and maybe that's more of just an old school mindset that, that I have. But I know, you know, there's a lot of kids playing college baseball when they come in as freshmen that are pretty physically developed. But pretty physically developed, but they don't know how to run the bases or they don't know how to situational hit because they never had to do it. They've always been just the best hitter. Uh, and, you know, they've paid a lot of money for their own individual development. But when it comes to playing team baseball, trying to teach them team baseball, um, it, 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 that, that is where we have to spend a lot of our time with our, with our incoming guys, just because they don't have that background. I think that is absolutely fantastic insight and i'm so glad you were able to touch upon that and i kind of want to kind of go towards the pitching side and, and i try to tell parents when you're getting so consumed with metrics and velocity you're missing out on the college picture meaning in college you have to be able to mix you have to be able to locate secondary uh pitches and plus counts and things of that nature are are are, are you starting to see a, a return to the pitch ability as opposed to the velocity dynamic uh, that has kind of built itself up over the last few years with regard to high school pitching? That's a great question. Um, and I'll, 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 I'll answer it as in a roundabout way. I, I think, I, I, I think there is certainly a place for both. I think that, I think that, I think that you, you, you have, you, you have to, to have some level of quality velocity. Like you, you're not going to come into an SEC school and be a right-hander that's, you know, 84, 86 with three pitches in the strike zone and survive a lineup more than maybe six outs. Like you're going to get hit. Right. If you don't, you know, we can train our guys at such a high level when it comes to training them to hit velocity now that 88 is just, that's not, that's a soft fastball now. You know, that's been the biggest change too. 90, 90 is not that big of a deal anymore. Um, that being said, like you can't have the other end of the spectrum where there's a lot of guys that can throw 95 miles an hour, but they spray it all over the place and you can't pitch those guys because you can't trust them. You know, the, the same thing still gets you beat in baseball, the things you cannot defend. When you walk batters and you give up home runs, you can't defend that. So guys that can't throw strikes, that can't throw the ball around the plate, they're they're not going to pitch in college baseball meaningful innings because they you simply can't trust them when you pitch them, that they're going to be able to force contact and to pitch in the zone. So I, I, I'm still a big believer of command. I think you have to be able to command the fastball. Um, I think it's important that, you know, pitchers learn how to develop, you know, the ability to locate the fastball in what I call the triangle up in and out like you got to be able to throw your fastball to both sides of the plate and pitch up when you need to you got to be able to land a breaking ball for the in, you know for a strike and be able to you know to to expand with it when you can and you need to be able to throw a change up i think too many kids in this day and age are trying to throw multiple breaking balls we see that a lot um you know a lot of guys in college baseball are throwing two breaking balls i don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with it but you have to be able to clearly define two breaking balls i think oftentimes guys are throwing curveballs and sliders and they become kind of the same pitch it kind of morphs into a slurve um, you can't you don't clearly see guys throwing a true curveball and a true slider it kind of the pitches start to morph together 
So um, I'm just a big believer in like, hey, learn how to throw one breaking ball first. Learn how to throw a changeup. And, and if you can throw three pitches and you can throw them in the strike zone, you got a chance to be a starter. Then let the nutrition and the strength coach and just age develop your velocity naturally. Um, I think that's a that's a better plan than trying to focus on nothing but velocity to get recruited and scouted and things of that nature. Because if you can't command the ball, regardless of how hard you throw it, you're you're simply just not going to pitch. And it's it's just that simple. And I really love the, the message you sent there. Let the physical development bring the velocity, the physical maturation, mother nature just taking course from 14 to 19 years of age is going to help with regard to that velocity. It's a great message. You know, I would love for you to share as a elite recruiter, some of the things you're looking for in a potential student athlete, like regardless of position, uh, what are some of the attributes uh, physically, skill set wise, that you're looking at that may separate a student athlete with regard to being a, a potential Division One caliber athlete. Well, I think the first thing you have to, the first thing that there, there's several things that I look for, but like if I'm watching a kid play, the first thing that I want to look at is when he's on defense, does he have defensive flexibility? Does he have skills? Does he have defensive skills? So, like, how do, how do his hands work? How does his arm work? How does he move on the field of play? Um, a guy that I feel like has can play in the middle of the field that has defensive flexibility, that guy's going to bring value to a roster. Just the ability to move around and play different spots on the field. Um, another thing that I look for is strike zone discipline. Like, does when he walks up to the plate, can he manage in at bat? Like, if he if can he manage in at bat, does he chase out of the strike zone? He gets in a 2 0 count, got those in a curveball in the dirt. Does he swing at it or does he take it? You know, when a guy gets a good heater in the strike zone, you know, is he ready to hit it? And can he hit velocity? Like, you got to be able to manage velocity. If you can't hit velocity, you're going to have a hard time hitting at this level. So I like to see a guy be able to, you know, to turn on a fastball. Can he get to a heater? Can he hit the ball to all fields? Does does he have a great approach at the plate? Does he make an adjustment with two strikes? Um, you know, can he fight to get on base? Uh, for me, it's it's about strike zone discipline, the ability to hit the ball to all fields uh, and manage at bats in a quality way and be able to have the defensive flexibility to play multiple positions. Those are kind of like the big pieces that I look for first. Um, and then and then we kind of go from there. Um, you know, we typically, um, you know, I've, I've always had power oriented offenses. So people always kind of mistake me for being a power type guy. I, I like to recruit power bats. I really haven't ever done that. I've I've always tried to recruit guys who had what I felt like were the physicality to hit for power, but were good hitters first. And I think just, again, the physical maturation of coming to school and getting bigger, faster, and stronger, the power starts to come out of them. It's the same thing with velocity. Like for me, power and velocity uh, are kind of the same things. If a guy can pitch and we get him stronger, the velocity will increase. If a guy can hit, as we get him stronger, his power will increase. Uh, so I look for, you know, guys that 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 have plate discipline at the plate and have strike zone, can throw the ball in the strike zone on the mound, and do they have the physical ability looking at their projection of their body to be able to grow and physically develop more power and more velocity. But, um, you know, we like baseball players. I mean, I like guys that they're going to make their team better. Like at the end of the day, when you go watch a guy play, you got to look at him and say, this guy can help us win games at this level. There's so many things that this guy can do. Um, that, how does he manage his frustration? That's another big one. Like I look at their body language, like what kind of body language does the player have on the field? I mean, that doesn't mean he always has to be like super intense or high energy. There's a lot of great baseball players that are very even keel and calm and cerebral on the field. That's okay. But if they strike out, how do they handle it? You know, if they give up a three-run homer, how do they handle it? You know, can he immediately just move on to the next pitch? Uh, or, you know, does he start to fall apart as soon as he starts to face failure? Um, you know, that's a big one. Like mental toughness is your ability to manage your failures. Like if you can manage your failures and move on immediately, you can you you have a chance to be successful and a more consistent player. If you're like an emotional roller coaster just based on how you're performing, you're probably going to have a hard time being a really good player. You're gonna, your highs are going to be high and your lows are going to be low. You know, one of the great – college baseball atmospheres is columbia south carolina 
was fortunate to go there twice and watch my son participate. And I always tell parents, if you have the ability and you have the, you know, you think your student athlete is, is going to be able to play at that level, you definitely want to go and watch a game and participate uh, as a fan to understand the collective experience. And Monty, last question, how are you with regard to how would you like student athletes to contact you or, or the staff at South Carolina? And, and how about your camps over the summer and the fall? Is that something that you would encourage potential student athletes to participate in? It's a great question. Yes. I mean, in, in this day and age, especially with the recruiting rules being that the, the way that they are, it's great to have kids come to prospect camps. Like when we have prospect camps, it's very beneficial for us to be able to get them on the field and, and watch them watch them work out on the field, be able to talk to them, get to know them better as people. I think when it comes to communication, I think the personal touch matters. I think um, the player reaching out directly to the coaching staff through direct message through social media is a great way to do it or have their coaches reach directly out to the coaches. We get so many emails and there's so many recruiting services now. You don't, it's very hard as a coach who gets inundated with so many emails about players to really be able to decipher, um, you know, what's real and what isn't. Is this kid a really good player? Is he just an okay player? Is it a recruiting service reaching out to me? Those kind of things. I think if you have people in your circle that are respected coaches, have those coaches reach out directly to the schools that you have an interest in if, if he thinks you have the ability to play at that school um, or have the athlete uh, reach out directly to that coaching staff you know, via social media uh, to make that connection. I think those are the, the things that I would recommend you know, to, to families. I don't think you have to do a ton of showcase events anymore. I just think, again, like – you know, social media is so big. There's it, it's it's it, it's hard to be unnoticed uh, anymore. Um, but if you're going to do showcase events and tournaments and things of that nature, you want to go to the good ones. You want to play, you know, go to the the PBRs and some of the perfect game events that are where co college coaches are going to be so that you can be seen. But I still think that having a reputable high school coach or travel ball coach or, or scout or someone who has uh, you know, a, a good reputation in our game to reach out on your behalf, that matters because then the coach is going to say, okay, well, if, if this guy's reaching out to me about this player, he's probably pretty good. Um, or having the player just reach out directly through social media, I think that's a, that's a good way to do it. Well, Monty, I want to say thank you for taking the time in season. It's greatly appreciated, and I wish you nothing but success. Best of luck not only this weekend against a and but throughout the rest of the regular season into the regionals and supers. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. You're very, very welcome. And folks, if you have a question for Coach Lee, please go ahead and submit it. I'm going to have all the contact information for South Carolina baseball, Coach Lee in particular. And if you have a comment, please leave it down below, and I'll be sure to share it with Coach Lee. Have a great week in baseball.